This is your Weather Extreme video for Saturday, September the 24th. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters, and we've got a lot of weather on our plate. Let's start with the satellite image this morning. We have mostly clear skies across nearly all of the southeastern United States, with perhaps the exception of the southern half of the state of Florida and this Florida peninsula. A few clouds spotted about, but mostly a clear sky. We're still dealing with high pressure. Geez, that sounds familiar. I think we've been saying that since like last June. But we're dealing with the surface high pressure. And of course, we do have a frontal system off to the west that is going to be bringing some changes our way. In the meantime, in the upper atmosphere at 500 millibars, we have a very big ridge. But we are watching a closed low and a nice deep trough over the northern half of the Rockies. And that is going to be dragging a front our direction and bringing some Welcome relief to these 90s. We may be able to say goodbye to them after this weekend. Temperatures across the area this morning generally in the lower 70s after we hit some records yesterday. Uh, Anniston, Tuscaloosa, Montgomery, and Pensacola all established new record highs uh, for this date. You can check out the um, text uh, on the blog post. Watch warning map is uh, somewhat free. Uh, we do have some blues up there in New England. Those are uh, some freeze ad uh, advisories. We do have uh, some flash flood watches over uh, West Texas and the southwestern part of Texas down towards the Big Bend area. Over along uh, the, the coast of California, we have some heat advisories as well as some fire danger. That's the bright red pink. And there's a couple of uh, winter weather advisories in the central Rockies. QPF, unfortunately, despite the fact that we do desperately need to see some rain, the rain over the next five days is not expected to be much, and it's likely to come primarily in the latter half of Monday and into very early Tuesday, and I'll be explaining in a moment why it looks like it'll be pretty scattered. No uh, major risks of severe weather, but we do have a marginal risk that is in an arc from West Texas up across the uh, eastern part of Kansas and the western part of Iowa into the eastern Dakotas for day one. Day two, there's a small marginal risk uh, over northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin and southern Lake Michigan. And then on day three, nothing other than thunderstorms. The tropics remain rather busy, as they have since, actually, uh, early in September, around the 8th, 9th, 10th or so. We have Carl. Carl is expected to move out into... Uh, the uh, North Atlantic away from Bermuda, giving Bermuda a bit of a pounding this morning. And it, it could become a hurricane as it moves out over the Northern Atlantic. And the second one behind Carl is Lisa. Lisa is not expected to do much of anything as it's expected to fizzle. And right behind uh, Lisa, but very far south, we have a, a large area of disturbed weather and a very broad low pressure area. As a matter of fact, uh, we're not running model projections on this just yet, but it does appear that this will stay very far south as it moves rather rapidly across the South Atlantic at speeds of 20 to 25 miles an hour. Uh, and we'll be talking about how the GFS is actually picking up on this starting around uh, next weekend. All right, let's get to the 06 EGF GFS model run. And there's our ridge, uh, our heat ridge, keeping us warm. Perhaps with highs today in the 94 to 98 range, we might set some records again, although the records in some spots, like Birmingham, a record of 99, I doubt that we're going to change that one. At the surface, uh, we see that there's uh, some uh, showers more prevalent over the Gulf Coast, and that is because uh, on uh, Sunday we note that we do have a little weakness in the pressure field that is over uh, southwest Georgia, uh, southern Alabama, and the Florida Panhandle. Uh, that weakness appears not likely to cause more than just some isolated showers as moisture remains somewhat limited. On Monday, that's when the action really begins for us as uh, after Sunday being another hot day, we expect to see this trough finally move across the Mississippi River. Uh, and as it does, it's going to take a surface low across uh, just north of the western Great Lakes and drag a cold front down into the area. Looks like, based on the GFS, the cold front should be arriving in the afternoon, and so we expect to see at least some showers. However, as you notice, the GFS is just not uh, bullish on the amount of rain we're expected, and one of the reasons for that is that precipitable water values, the amount of water in the column, is just simply not very high. It's on the range of about 1.4 to 1.7 maybe, 
Uh, so it's uh, it's not really high enough uh, to be real confident, but it is high enough that we'll still see at least some showers. Unfortunately, it means everybody's not going to get wet, and we need a widespread, long-duration rain event to help us with the drought conditions. By Tuesday, the trough has um, is moving into the eastern part of the country, and so the front pushes on down south into the Gulf of Mexico. We stay with that trough on Wednesday, so that's going to be our coolest morning, and I expect to see some spots, those normally cooler spots, reach perhaps the upper 40s for morning lows, but most of the state will at least be in the 50s. Part of the reason for that, of course, is that the high pressure coming in is not coming in from the north. It's actually coming in from the west. By Thursday, uh, the ridge to our west is now beginning to slide ever so slowly eastward, so that keeps us basically in dry conditions with uh, a large high now off to our north. By Friday, well, we're seeing the ridge over the eastern half of the country as a couple of different long wave or, uh, pardon me, strong troughs come into the west coast. By Saturday, uh, your attention is probably being drawn to the uh, right southern, uh, right lower quadrant of the screen, and we'll talk about that in just a minute, but uh, we basically on Saturday still have uh, the ridge, so it looks like we'll stay dry. Now, getting out into voodoo country, once again, you just simply cannot avoid seeing that uh, rather uh, large bullseye down in the western Caribbean. You know, across the continental United States, we're seeing one trough, and that trough followed by another one that is coming out of western Canada. And those are going to play a role potentially in whether or not we have a tropical system in the Gulf. When we move out to the 6th of October, you see the GFS is bringing it right through the, the slot uh, the, uh, between the Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula. And uh, at the surface, it's got a tremendous bullseye of a low. Now, could the GFS be overdoing it? Quite possibly. Uh, however, there are some reasons, and uh, you can watch, uh, read the discussion for all those reasons, but primarily uh, things are more likely to become more favorable for this system in the Caribbean and then ultimately in the Gulf. So we'll have to be watching. No landfall predictions. We're not even predicting that this storm will occur just yet. The GFS is showing that, and we're going to have to be keeping an eye on it. Uh, because of the trough that's approaching, uh, the storm the GFS has identified is uh, likely to recurve uh, following a track uh, somewhat similar uh, as it comes ashore according to the GFS uh, in the vicinity of North uh, Florida. But again, no forecast just yet. This could be gone tomorrow, but we have some reasons to believe there is some continuity with this. That'll do it for the Weather Extreme video for this morning. The next one should be posted by 7.30 or so. In the meantime, stay tuned to the blog for notes on Alabama's weather. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Stay cool and Godspeed.